Let's take a look at a Rembrandt painting, Landscape with a Stone Bridge. This is in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, and it's not a very big painting. It's 12 by 17 inches wide, and Rembrandt was Dutch 17th century artist. Here's a self-portrait he did when he was younger. He actually did quite a few of these. Here's one uh, also from the Rijksmuseum when he was older. You can see the beautiful brushwork in these paintings. Rembrandt was really a master of all aspects of painting and uh, here's a closer look at this painting and as we pan back I want to look at the whole thing and talk about how it's put together and composed. It's hard to tell whether Rembrandt painted this from observation or he composed it uh, not looking at anything because he was such a capable painter and could have done this probably without looking at anything. A lot of Dutch 17th century painters like this uh, strong diagonal division of light and dark. So if we make a diagonal corner to corner, you see most of the darks are on the top right, most of the lights are on the bottom left. Uh, Vermeer does this as well. If we split up the painting and find the middle, you'll notice that tree just crosses from the bottom half of the painting to the top half of the painting. And that little oar just reaches from the left half to the right half of the painting, which I think is a Pretty great idea visually in both cases. Also notice that diagonal division of light is echoed in the angle of the oar that the oarman has in the water there. It's just that same angle as a corner to corner diagonal across the whole painting would be. One of the things I think makes these paintings visually resonant is the way that Rembrandt uses the proportions of the painting to place things inside the painting. So for example, if we take the height of this painting and drop it down from the right side, it comes right to the middle of that bridge, which is sort of the main event in the landscape here, along with the light on those trees. Rembrandt does this a lot, where he'll take a proportion of a painting and use it at a 90 degree angle to place something in the painting. So uh, if we look again, the horizon line right there is actually half of the width of the painting from the top of the painting. So again, if you take the painting, divide it in half, the width, and that's how far the horizon is from the top of the painting. There's a little church steeple on the right there. If we take that width and divide it again and have a quarter of the width of the painting, that's how far the steeple is from the bottom of the painting. And then again, he'll take a 90 degree proportion and take the height of the painting, divide that in half and half again. So you have a quarter of the height of the painting is the same as the interval from the, the distance of, from the steeple to the right side of the painting. Another thing we'll notice about the painting is he has all four of his corners different. If you look at the top corners, one's blue sky, uh, top right is like brownish underpainting and on the bottom left is dirt, and the bottom right is water. So all four corners of his painting are different from each other, which is a good sign that he's really thinking through his decisions. Although it's hard to say how many decisions are thought through beforehand, and how many of them may have been arrived at intuitively, and it's just sort of what felt right to him visually. We don't really know, because it's been a long time since he panned this. But we can see that there's a lot of structure in the painting, and it's actually a lot like what has been said about Baroque music, particularly Bach that there's a rigid structure underneath and a light expressive surface on top. And this is definitely also true for Rembrandt. His surface is really beautiful and where he's using thick paint is usually where there's more light on something and he uses thinner, more transparent paint where things are more dark, which makes sense in a couple of ways. One, your paint is gonna catch light incidentally and reflections more where it's thick. So it makes sense for the paint to be thick in the lights and um, so that's an optical reason. Secondly, conceptually, light is a presence of something and darkness is a lack of something. So there's less physical stuff where there's darkness on his paintings. And th that light and dark is really organizing Rembrandt's paintings. He really key lights something um, where you have like one main light event organizing the whole painting. So I have a great affection for this painting. I, I did a copy of it and I did it the same size because I think the scale is kind of an important thing and gets lost uh, a lot, especially how we're seeing this now. You know, digital media, it's really hard to tell what size something was originally. It's sort of funny to make a video about this painting too because this painting is the reason I didn't go to graduate school for film and that I went for painting instead. I, I found something very touching about painting and human that I think that uh, media like film and television, while they're more sort of powerful agents of social change, certainly now, there was something really human that they couldn't quite get it, especially that touch, like the touch of someone 
um, that looking at it hundreds of years later really occurs in the present, um, which is also something that I think is more similar, um, that makes film more similar to painting than photography. Because when you see those brush strokes on a painting, they always happen in the present. Uh, when you see something in film and it's moving, it's always happening in the present because it's happening in real time. Whereas photography actually is always in the past. So I think that conceptually, film and painting have much more in common than film and photography. But at any rate, so this painting is in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. I do hope you'll get a chance to see it in, in person someday because there's really no substitute for putting your body in front of a uh, work of art and seeing it for yourself because it was designed to be a specific size. So I hope you get a chance to do that and that you found this useful and interesting.